Hi, I'm Matt Mayfield, and you're watching the Audio Fundamentals course. So it's Thursday today, about 10 a.m. here in St. Paul, where I'm recording, and the sky is completely green. So you might hear some rain and maybe sirens. It should be fun. So today we're going to look at amplitude processing, otherwise known as dynamic processing. And we're going to answer these three questions and look at the compressor in detail. So first, defining what an amplitude or dynamics processor is. It's something that processes sounds by changing their amplitude, their loudness. And all amplitude processors work by, in one way or another, watching what level a sound reaches at any given moment and then reacts by turning a virtual or metaphorical volume knob according to the rules that you get to set up. The overall framework of which type of amplitude processor you're dealing with, that's what sets the overall rules. You get to choose the details by changing the parameters. So there are four main types. There's the compressor, the limiter, the expander, and the gate. These have some similarities and differences to each other that are best shown in a chart like this. So you can see we have two top headings of the columns. There's reduced level differences and exaggerate level differences. Under reduced level differences, you'll see we got the compressor and the limiter. And under exaggerate, we've got the expander and the gate. And then on the left here, I've labeled soft changes and hard changes. And the compressor and expander, those both make less of a difference to the sound than the limiter and the gate. And now you can hear the thunder. That should be fun. Here are some examples. Here's the normal sound as it was recorded. This is a soft sound. And this is a loud sound! Now let's see what happens when we run that through a compressor. This is a soft sound. And this is a loud sound! Notice that a compressor only turns the loud stuff down. It doesn't actually turn the quiet stuff up. That's a second step that happens later. Now to refresh your ears, here's the original recording, and then we'll hear an expander. Here's the original. This is a soft sound. And this is a loud sound! And now here's that sound run through an expander. This is a soft sound. And this is a loud sound! So you might even need to wear headphones to hear that soft part at all. Now to begin looking at what some of the parameters are in dynamics processors, we're going to start with the compressor as an example, and in fact spend most of our time in this video on that, because it's probably the most common one, and it's a useful place to start for going through all the parameters and the general principles of how dynamic processors work. There's the threshold, the ratio, attack, release, and there's usually others that various compressors have different combinations of. But the most important ones to know are these first four, because they are on every compressor. Some compressors don't have controls for them, but they're happening in the background. Let's start with the threshold. So we're going to get our old friend, the amplitude over time graph. And we'll use that sound, it's going to get very familiar to your ears, that we heard earlier. This is a soft sound. And this is a loud sound! So the threshold is an amplitude level. You can turn it up, you can turn it down, wherever you want to put it. Now the compressor changes the volume of the sound when it goes above the threshold that you set. So on the left you can see the original sound, and after compression it will be squashed down like so. Now notice that the sound can still get louder than the threshold level, but just not by as much. Now where you set the threshold impacts what parts of the sound get turned down, and that depends on what the sound is. So in this particular sample, if you set the threshold at that middle level, just the words, this is a loud sound, will get turned down. But if we set the threshold even higher, then only a couple brief moments will be compressed, like so. Meanwhile, again comparing to this middle level, if you set the threshold lower, that means more of the time, when the sound is hanging around at lower levels, more of it will get compressed. Now so far we've looked at changing the threshold while keeping everything else the same in the compressor. Now let's look at changing the ratio. A helpful metaphor is that the ratio is almost like the weight 
of the compression. So for example, if the ratio is set at its minimum in most compressors, that means it won't do anything. It'll be no compression above the threshold, and it'll be more or less as if the sound had not gone through a compressor at all. If you turn the ratio up slightly to a low ratio, it will compress the sound a little bit, like you see on the white line. If you turn the ratio up higher, it'll compress the sound more, like you see on the red line. So if we go in detail with this a little bit more, that control is expressed as a mathematical ratio. So you'll see often 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 5 to 1, and sometimes you'll get that in fractions, 1.1 to 1, 1.5 to 1, and so on. The way to interpret this is that it describes how many decibels above the threshold level the sound can try to go to end up being just one decibel above the threshold after the compressor does its thing. Let's look at that in a graph. Here I've labeled the amplitude axis in actual decibels. Let's say that we're in the analog domain and we have stuff that's both above and below zero. And we have a sound that looks like this. And you'll notice that the place that the threshold is set, there are two moments during that sound where it gets louder than the threshold. If we have a ratio set at 2 to 1, let's look at that first peak, the sound tries to go 4 decibels above the threshold. Because the compressor is set at 2 to 1, it will only allow it 2 decibels above the threshold. Meanwhile, on that other peak on the right, it only tries to go 2 decibels above the threshold, so the compressor is going to allow it to go 1 decibel above the threshold. This will be the end result of a 2 to 1 ratio. Let's briefly look at another ratio, 3 to 1. So let's say we have this sound. And the question to ask yourself here is which peaks will be compressed and by how much? If this is a 3 to 1 ratio, for example, notice that peak on the left. Well, since it tries to go 3 decibels above the threshold, it's going to be allowed to go 1 decibel above the threshold. The much taller peak on the right, if you count up from minus 3 where the threshold is, let's see, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decibels above the threshold, 3 to 1 ratio, do some simple division, and you'll see that it's going to go 2 decibels above the threshold. So we've seen how threshold and ratio affect a compressor, but the examples so far have been very limited because they only show a compressor that instantly catches all sound. A real compressor takes time to respond to the sounds.